Hey friends and welcome to the video. So I decided to make this video because I have a feeling that there is someone out there who has a goal or a desire to start a YouTube channel and for whatever reason you are procrastinating, you are talking yourself out of starting and coming up with all these different scenarios in your head as to why it would not be successful, whether you are shy or for personal or professional reasons, you cannot be in front of the camera and be like the face of your brand or the face of your channel. If that is you, definitely continue listening because I was able to um, monetize a completely faceless channel in six months. So now that you're here and you've decided that this is you and hopefully I have one or two takeaways for you to help you get started on your journey. I also know that there is a lot of people that have like this New Year's resolution or this New Year's goal to get started on YouTube. You do not have to wait into January. You can start tomorrow. You can start today. You can start as soon as possible. As soon as you finish this video, you can start your own channel. Um, I monetize my other channel in six months. Completely different niche. Never show my face. I don't even use my real name. So yes, it is possible. So a little backstory on myself. Um, I started this channel years ago and it's had several niches but originally this channel i share my quote unquote extreme couponing journey and being that i showed the items in the store on the shelf the prices the coupons i use my receipts my haul I was never in my videos and I was able to get monetized. So I never really thought about it back then. Like, wow, this is a faceless channel and I got monetized. I've since changed niches, but the original 10 years ago, I never showed my face and I was able to get monetized. Fast forward to last year, this channel I've had for years, I've changed several niches. Um, my last niche or the last videos that I really focused on was my journey as a fashion reseller. As I am transitioning out of that industry, I was thinking, okay, now what can I talk about now on this channel? So instead of talking about something different on this channel, I decided to create a completely new channel. Now, that channel, I kind of knew what industry I wanted to talk about, but I wasn't sure. And also, meanwhile, I start researching on YouTube. And just in case you are not aware, there are tons and tons and tons and tons of channels here on YouTube that are faceless. A lot of them use automations and different things like that, AI. My channel is completely just me talking. It is a black stream, just like you see now. It is just like this mic as if it is a vibration or just a frequency of what I'm saying. But I basically have my iPhone on the desk. I did the um, exposure all the way down to, I guess, zero because my screen is black. So that's all I am using. You don't need any special equipment. You don't need any external mic. You don't need any of that stuff. Um, I did add the, um, the mic and my Instagram on the stream. I do use a um, app for that, which I just, a oh, video shop is what I use to add the text and everything on the stream. But other than that, you don't need any special equipment. You don't need any software, any apps, AI, any of that stuff. So I decided to go into an industry or share an industry that I already had experience with. So I guess that's one of my first tips. If you are wanting to start a faceless channel and you are just talking, I would suggest you go the route of, I would definitely suggest that you go the path of least resistance. And what do I mean the path of least resistance? The path where you already have a lot of knowledge in that industry, whether you study, you read up on it, whether you have formal education. Also, if you worked in that industry, or if you just have real life experience. Um, if you've, you've probably watched 
faceless channels on YouTube and didn't even really think about it. But for instance, someone showing you how to meal prep, you don't need to be in the video, your face to meal prep, because all you need to show is the ingredients, you putting everything together, the recipe, putting the dish in the oven, the microwave or whatever, and the after effects. Also, if you make your own clothes, if you're a designer, if you're showing someone how to grow plants, if you're showing someone how to, I don't know, to personalize a note, thank you note, using calligraphy or something, you're not showing your face. So there's so many different things that you can do and not show your face. You can research here on YouTube, faceless YouTube channels also to give you ideas. But back to what I was saying, I started my um, channel, my faceless channel, within an industry that I already had experience with. Now, I already had experience in the industry, like the umbrella, but not this particular niche. Being that I did not have hands-on experience with this particular niche, it was a niche that I came up with within the industry under the big umbrella, smaller part of the big umbrella, this very niched, niched part of this, I was able to do at home. And it was like a low barrier entry fee. So I decided to go online, apply for a position within this niche that I could work from home. And my idea was I was going to find one of the really popular companies within that niche and I was going to just document document my journey. I was going to give a review of that particular company because one thing that I also realized when you are just here on YouTube in general, you do want to have some evergreen content on your channel that people are coming back to to watch. So one of the things that I did on my Faceless channel was a company that was very popular within my niche, I did a review on their website. So every day that video is getting tons of um, watch minute, watch hours. I posted this video about a year ago. Every day it still gets views. Just like here on this channel, I posted a DIY mannequin Christmas tree and that video gets views almost all year round. So you definitely want to focus on evergreen content. Like I say, a review of a site or of a product is a good evergreen content video. And um, one thing that I realized with this channel, one of the reasons why I was so inconsistent on this channel is because I didn't always want to get ready and be camera ready and be in front of the camera. So I knew going into a second channel, I wanted to be more consistent, but what was holding me back was being on camera. So that's why I didn't want to be on camera. So one of the ways that that channel did get um, monetized within six months is because I recognized my shortcomings. I recognized the things that I didn't like to do, which was being on camera. So being that I wasn't on camera, I was able to post two to three videos a week. I've never done that on this channel. Um, so that's another pro of being faceless. You can just put out more content. And also before I even started that channel, which is another tip, I came up with at least 15 to 20 video topics, titles, subjects, to record on before I even started that channel because I didn't want to start the channel and then be stressed out about coming up with content ideas. So I wanted to have the content ideas before I even launched the channel. And I also went ahead and recorded videos and scheduled them out as well. Um, being that it was a faceless channel, people only heard my voice. They didn't really see me, which can be a good thing. I watched a young lady's video a couple years ago and she said that she started making faceless videos because a lot of times people will judge you based on the way you look. Sometimes people will like you or dislike you based solely on the way that you look. So if you are giving some type of information in your videos um, or showing someone how to do something, me personally, I'm just listening to your voice. I can care less how you look as long as you are helping me to get to my end desire, which is knowing about that subject or knowing how to accomplish what I need to accomplish. I can care less how you look, right? So um, 
that's one of the things that I kept in mind when I was posting my videos that if people are just hearing my voice tell them how to do something, I need to know what I am talking about. And one of the easiest ways to know what you're talking about in real time is to be doing that particular thing. Now, I'm not saying that you have to go out and get an additional job or you need to do whatever, but it's just easier to talk about things in real time. It's easier to talk about a company that you are working for online um, from home or remotely while you're actually working for them. It's easier to tell someone how to lose weight, how to meal prep while you're on or in that journey of your life opposed to trying to remember what you did five years ago, if that makes sense. So like I said, one of the videos, my most popular video on my faceless channel is me giving a review of a site that I work on or work for from home that can also be done remotely. Um, so I talk about my experience with that. I share um, just tidbits of my interactions with some of the customers. Um, I also share how much I make, how many hours I work. I don't have a schedule. And I so I basically, I talk about which hours are good for me, which hours are slow, which hours are busy. Um, just my mindset when working, customer notes, and all types of things like that. Um, also, to come up with content for your videos, you can also ask in your videos, what are some of the things that you would like to know about the industry? What are some of the things that you would like to know about meal prep, for instance? What are some of the things that you would like to know, for instance, if you have a very extreme niche? Let's say, for instance, you are a single mother and you are raising triplets. There are women and men out there that are single parents that your information could be so helpful for them. So one of the things that you might want to start thinking about is if I were me or someone in my position, what are some of the frequently asked questions or some of the things that I would like to know if I am in this same situation? So you can make videos based on what you think people want to know and you can also ask them in your videos. What are some of the things that you would want to know? And I made a monthly series touching base on frequently asked questions in previous videos, comments. So let me see if there's anything else that I want to share. But you definitely want to have um, a frequent, consistent schedule. Like I said, I think if you're trying to monetize your faceless channel, and six months or less, you definitely need to do two to three videos a week and make sure that your videos are as informative as possible. You want to sound like you know what you're talking about. And like I said, the best way to even talk about something is to be doing it in real time. You're doing it this week, this month, this year. It's not something that you did five, 10 years ago because it might be outdated. And I also will be making a second video because even from that faceless YouTube channel that I don't even use my real name, I've been able to create three streams of income from that passive income. So one of them being a Patreon. Um, like I said, I've never shown my face, but one thing, even if you don't show your face, I think it's very important to brand your channel. One of the ways that I branded my channel without showing my face, there's no pictures of a human in any of my um, thumbnails. I use the same color and the same font. So you recognize me just by my colors. Even if you're strolling through YouTube or you don't get a notification that I posted a video, once you see the color of that thumbnail and the fonts, you probably automatically think of myself. So there are other ways to brand yourself other than showing your face. But like I said, a faceless channel, it's a great opportunity for here on YouTube if you don't wanna show your face. And here on this channel, as you probably see, the last couple of my videos are faceless, but I will be doing videos where I'm actually in the um, videos, my face, my body, what I'm doing, but it will also give you a chance to not be camera ready every time you post a video and you can do half and half. 
if that is going to keep you consistent. Because one thing I did notice, and you probably have heard this and you know this, when you are consistent on YouTube, when you show up, they um, recommend your video more. They push your content more, right? So, but like I said, I do want to post a second video because I think a lot of people too believe that or they think that the only way they can make good money using this platform is to be monetized. But these other sources of income that I mentioned for my faceless channel, I started making money on that channel before I even got monetized. So I'll make a separate video about that. So let me just see if there's anything else that I want to um, share with you about that. One of the things that I did not do with my YouTube channel that I definitely recommend that you do, because the whole point of having a channel is to keep people on your channel and to watch multiple videos, right? Videos that flow, videos that's going to help with your watch time, to help with your watch hours, whether you are trying to get monetized or just in general, right? And I wish I would have added in cards to my videos or a playlist or a recommended video or something for them to click on that next video and stay on my channel. So definitely look into in cards and as you create videos in the same topic or a playlist, you can link that playlist at the end of your videos. And you can also link that playlist and reference it in the description of your video. You always want to talk about the next video. But yeah, that's something that I wish that I would have done um, with my channel getting monetized or just I did do that after the fact, but it would have helped me get to my watch time hours and subscriber count sooner. I think so. Another thing that I want to mention too, when I started my youth, my faceless channel, you have to have patience. My first five, six, seven videos were only getting five, 10, 20, 30 views, right? So I also mentioned that my niche was extremely niched. Maybe I didn't. I think a lot of people don't even know that that industry that I made videos about still exist because it's from the 90s. It was really popular in the 80s and 90s. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. I'm not gonna go into um, detail about it, but the one thing too about being extremely niched on YouTube, you don't have to be, but if you are and you search for your niche or your topics of what you're thinking about doing on YouTube and then you realize people have not made videos in the last two, three years, then you read the comments and you see people have been there in the last couple of weeks still asking questions. That means that there's still an audience craving for information, but no one has posted a video in years. That may give you some insight too as to what type of content to provide because people in those videos are asking for certain things so you can answer those questions in your, um, in your videos. But definitely be realistic. When I started my Faceless channel, I was a little, um, I was getting a little impatient because, you know, five views here, 10 views there, and I'm like, you know, what am I doing? But it takes time. Give yourself time. You know, I think after the sixth or seventh video, I start seeing more and more views and people asking questions and people asking questions, therefore giving me insight as to what my next video should be about. But like I said, once you decide on what your channel is going to be about, you can always look up on YouTube to see what videos have already been um, posted and read to see what comments people still have that are current um that are current definitely don't overthink it i would just post what you feel comfortable posting and the um, algorithm your analytics will tell you exactly what people want more of i mentioned earlier a review for a particular company that video just took off overnight and I started doing different variations of that particular um, video. So that will give you insight as well. Check your analytics, but definitely be patient. Don't think too much into it. And I would definitely come up with about three different pillars or do three different sources of 
content for your channel. For instance, if you want to do reviews, if you want to do frequently asked questions, if you want to do something else and then base your videos around that and see which ones take off, make more of that particular um, content. A couple of things that, and this can also be a topic for some of your videos or a pillar, things that you wish you would have known or done in the beginning with that particular niche or things that you, mistakes that you made. That's another video that really took off for me, mistakes that I made in that particular industry because people want to avoid mistakes, right? So talk about that. But one thing that I wish I would have done with my Faceless YouTube channel, I wish that I would have promoted it sooner on social media. I didn't even use social media, I don't think, to promote that channel until after I got monetized. So definitely consider social media just to get eyes on your channel, just to funnel that traffic back to um, YouTube. And then last but least, another way to come up with video ideas or content ideas is if you go to someone's channel in the same niche as yours, and let's just say for instance, you focus on the their follower count or subscriber count versus the amount of people that have actually watched the video. For instance, if you come across someone's video or channel that is similar to the type of content that you want to provide or the industry or the niche. For instance, if you want to help someone um, grow herbs, I don't know, in the windowsill, and you come across another YouTube channel and that channel has 5,000 subscribers, but their videos are like 50,000 views, 100,000 views, you know that people are really interested in that particular topic. So you can put your own spin of it, spin on it because 5,000 subscribers, but 100,000 views, that should tell you something. But anyway, that is it for this video. Like I said, I am definitely going to post a, another video and share with you guys how I was able to turn that particular niche into three streams of income never showing my face, never using my real name, which is crazy because I, you know, when you have like this alter ego or you have like this alias online, I remember um, someone emailing me and I actually closed the email out with my real name, which I never used before. But when you're not really thinking about it, I mean, it's going to come out. It, it doesn't matter that they know my real name, but I just thought that that was funny. Like I had the channel for like a year and then I just slipped up and used my real name because you're used to using your real name, right? You're not used to using an alias, but that is it. Um, I just wanted to post that on this video, I mean on this channel, because I know that there are people out there wanting to start a YouTube channel, but for some reason you are telling yourself all the ways that it won't work for you. But like I said, research here on YouTube faces, YouTube channels. Think of something that you really enjoy talking about because you're going to be talking. There are faces channels that use um, captions only. I think that that's a little more time consuming to just proofread and make sure all those um, captions are correct and, you know, all that stuff. But Anyway, thank you so much for um, tuning in. Give the video a thumbs up. Let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you soon. Bye.